Hey guys, welcome to Ask Brojo Anything. Today's question is one of my personal favorites. The question is basically, how do I find a relationship that I like? And it's a very common question. As human beings, we feel driven to find a special relationship, build a special connection. It gives us a sense of security and purpose and meaning. It also makes us much more socially acceptable, especially to our parents and to, uh, to even to our peers. And the idea of having children, the idea of raising a family, the idea of growing old with someone, the idea of not being alone when you die someday long in the future, these are all meaningful things that, uh, that, that we tend to put front and center in our list of life goals. Now this question, how do I find a relationship that I like, is something that I hear a lot. I'm going to give the asker a name, a pseudonym, uh, Ed just so that we have something to reference him by. And I want to read his question because there's a lot more detail that I think bears uh, including in this discussion. So to paraphrase what Ed has written, he says, I have a question about the idea of finding someone with as few problems as possible. I'm 45 and I'm dating women around the same age and like 75% of them are single mothers with one or two children, with the youngest one around eight to 10 years old. The others are ones who seem to be deeply broken inside by the fact that they are over 40, uh, which means that they will probably never have children. So how is it possible to find someone who's not having those problems? And yeah, I don't wanna fix anyone or manipulate anyone. Um, just want to find the right person. Now there are a few key things here. Clearly Ed, he's exploring dating, he's exploring a number of different relationships, and he's grouped women into one of two categories in, in his dating universe. On the one hand, they have younger children, which he may not really want to have any responsibility for raising, so he has this idea, if I start a relationship with this woman, I'm now parenting someone else's children will have responsibilities there plus my partner will be distracted because she's a mom to a younger child or he sees the other side of the coin where he can find women who who aren't parents to young children children have grown up or perhaps they are um, by or in the case that he described they've never had children but he sees them as being very very distressed and disturbed by that that reality that they feel broken inside. Now this is Ed's worldview and I want to break his question into two different parts. The first question I see is why does it feel like all of the people that I'm meeting are not right, somehow broken, somehow not right for me and how do I find the right person for me? The first question bears talking about separately and the reason is that you know in most of our worlds we tend to create our social life out of convenience and that means that we meet people um, in places in our world where it's convenient for us to meet people uh, could be at work could be next door neighbors could be the the occasional social club or the local pub that we visit could be friends of friends when we go to a barbecue and that's it for a lot of us, we see that as these are my options for relationships. These are the only people I know. On top of that, you may have some online dating, Tinder or something like that, which will potentially help you meet some people you don't know in your local geographic area. Perhaps if you're lucky. Um, but in Ed's mind, it's very clear that these are his only options and I really want to challenge that and the reason is that in my life I thought that my uh, options were very limited as well I thought that pretty much it was going to be pure happenstance who I met and whether or not we would have an opportunity to build a connection and then of course everything from there is, is anyone's guess will she be attracted to me is she single am i attracted to her are we going to be staying in the same city for any decent period of time what are our life situations all these types of things but i really saw my options as very few 
And the reason I want to challenge that is that once I decided to take control over my own social life, I began joining social groups that I liked, that had deep meaning to me, groups where I could be more creative or more curious or talk about deep and meaningful subjects or get better exercise or go enjoy the outdoors more. Whatever things I was in the mood to improve my life also came with new social opportunities. And I think that's a very, very important thing to recognize is that most of the time we're limiting our own options. If you feel like the people in your world aren't really the kind of people you want to build a long-term relationship with, and that's an important goal for you, then expand your world. That's pretty much it. And I don't, you don't need to move to a new city or a new country at the drop of a hat, but you can simply take up some new hobbies, go back to school, try some new interests. And particularly, if you learn to follow your own values, you'll find that you're happier anyway, simply because you're doing things that are deep and meaningful to you. And the people that you meet there are more likely to share those same values, which is very, very significant when it comes to building a good relationship. I found this in more than any other place. I found this in two areas in my life. One is self-development, when I began exploring psychology and personal growth, fitness, health, life goals. Uh, and I would meet people and have discussions and I've made some fantastic friends, both men and women. And I've had some of the most fascinating dates where we end up talking about philosophy and psychology and just end up building an amazing connection because it happens to be something that we both really, really clicked on. The same thing in my fitness world. Uh, another area that's really, really connected for me is dancing. I never would have thought I would enjoy dancing. I definitely didn't think I would be any good at dancing ever, no matter how hard I tried. But I decided to give it a go. It was something I hadn't explored. And I found that dancing, the style I do is called uh, Brazilian Zouk Lombada. It's a really fun style. Um, it nurtures, it gives me the ability to be creative and to connect with people in ways I have never found in any other hobby or situation I've ever tried. And because the people there are of a similar mindset and a similar kind of interests, the friendships that I form in that environment are absolutely brilliant. So I wanna challenge you to expand your world. Look at where you're at, look at what you really wanna do and find a way to explore those areas and meet new people. So let's have a look at the second question. The second question to that was, how do I find a relationship that I like? Now, Ed's clearly looking for two things. One is a person that he likes, and the second is a life situation with that person that he likes. So he might actually meet someone that's pretty well a fantastic person. They'd get along great, but her life situation of being a mother to younger children complicates things in an uncomfortable way. So so something important to address there, in my opinion, is uh, to dig a little bit deeper into why that is. Why is there a belief that if she has a younger child, that that is somehow going to make this relationship um, something that you don't want to explore? In my experience, I've also dated uh, single mothers, I've also dated uh, women who are in their 40s who've never had children. I also date a lot of women in their 20s or 30s who want children someday. Some of them want children as soon as possible. Um, all different mindsets and life situations. And what I find is no matter what the mindset and life situation is, as long as you're very open and honest about what you want, and you, and you encourage her to be very open and honest about what she wants, you'll always know where you stand and what options exist for the both of you. And that's very important because you may have a fantastic relationship, but it only lasts a couple of years because you have different life directions. And that's fine. That's absolutely fine. Those are some of my best memories. So let's go a little deeper onto how to find a relationship that you like. 
There is a model that I really like to use when I'm discussing your social world, and it's the model of a garden. Garden's a very simple thing to imagine, even if you've never done gardening. Um, we, for the purposes of this discussion, see a garden as having four key components that make it succeed. And they are soil, seeds, water, and weeds. Okay, these are the four components we're gonna care about. The soil represents your life. What is your world like by yourself? Is it something that is conducive for a relationship to grow in? If you meet a woman who's a great match, who likes you, is she going to want to try to build something with you? Is there something beyond your personality, your location, you know, that, that allows that relationship to grow? So soil is very important. It's 100% under your control. It is, it is only under your control. It's your life. The second part is seeds. The seeds are the relationships that we invite to grow in our garden. Now we have the ability to plant them. We have the ability to make the soil uh, very, very healthy for their growth. We have the ability to water them and give them sun and keep the weeds away. But we can't make them grow. And this is a very important thing to realize is that you cannot make a relationship, okay? You can simply create the environment where the relationship might thrive. At that point, as long as you're doing the things needed to help that relationship thrive, the rest is not under your control. So let go of the sense of, I'm trying to hunt or I'm trying to create. And think of it as I'm trying to nurture and grow and create a space where something special can happen that will improve my life. That's the mindset around relationships. The final two parts, water and weeds. Water is the attention uh, and the investment that you make in that relationship. Um, you've probably had a situation before where you didn't quite call someone often enough and the relationship kind of fades. Or you can overwater it too. You can call them way too much or text them every five minutes. At some point they'll freak out, drown, and the relationship will, will go away as well. Uh, so, so learning how to give the right degree of attention, effort, investment in a relationship is a very important skill to develop here. Neither underwatering nor overwatering your garden. And the fourth part is weeds. Weeds is important, it's slightly more advanced and not necessarily part of this discussion. And it's basically getting rid of the things that are consuming all your resources. Relationships that aren't improving your life, um, meaningless friendships, uh, wasted time. You want to make certain that your, your time, your garden has the right relationships in it and that you're not spending time in, in useless things. Uh, where when you could be building a special relationship with somebody. Now, that, that's the model of the garden. The two parts that really matter here are simply the soil and the seeds. So for this discussion, we're trying to figure out how do I find the right seeds to put in my garden? And I really, really want to emphasize again that the soil is where you start. Rather than worrying about finding the right relationship, worry about being the right relationship. Worry about turning yourself into somebody that anybody you meet that you might like would be very curious to know more about. And that's that's really not that difficult. That really means learning what your core values are, building your life around them, creating some a life that's interesting and stable and fun and intriguing that uh, when you meet people, they're just immediately drawn to it. So focus on the soil first. Now let's talk about the seeds. Now this is where things get interesting. So most people, like I said, see their world as automatically limited in terms of their opportunity for relationships. And they feel in a sense that they've only got a few seeds to potentially pick from and that none of them really look that great. So there are a lot of ways to find new possible um, relationships that you could grow in your social garden and uh, and one of them is to start to join new social groups do more traveling go overseas perhaps get more involved in online communities you can meet people a lot of different ways and if you choose the right activities you'll meet people that you like even better than the people you're already that are already in your life that you have a much better connection with 
But there is a process as well that, that's important here is because at some point you'll find that I'm meeting way too many people and I need to actually um, meet better people. I need to figure out how do I identify the ones that are worth investing some time in. We all have limited time, so managing it is important. Um, and there are two parts to that. The first part is clearly to choose the best possible seeds for your garden. Now that means really looking to meet people uh, who are also interested in areas and topics and hobbies in activities that you also love. These are great connection points, particularly if they're based on your core values. And the second part is to learn how to filter. And that basically means how to keep the wrong kind of seeds out of your garden. Now, let's say as an example that for you, it is a, um, it's a deal breaker to date a woman who has children who still live at home. Let's just, let's just say that that's the case. Um, although I hope it's not. Um, if that's the case, then you have a lot of different options on how to try to identify and find those types of relationships and not even spend time exploring it. If, for example, you're doing online dating, you have a profile where you describe who you are and also what you're looking for in a relationship. And this is where filtering comes in. You have the opportunity to tell people exactly what you want out of, out of a relationship. You can be very kind and respectful about it. You can say, hey, um, I'd really like to have a relationship with someone who has no young children living at home, you know, um, whose children are either grown or who has never had children. I'd also like her to be interested in these hobbies. I'd also like her to be interested in the same things you're interested in, travel, reading, sports, whatever they are, really list out what you're looking for in your partner. And the reason is this will save you an enormous amount of time in that when you encounter, when someone sees your profile who finds you attractive but really is not a good fit for you from your perspective, you can identify them straight away. You can help them identify themselves as not a good fit for what you're looking for. You can save yourself an enormous amount of time like this. You've probably seen the same thing, for example, on Tinder, where women will quite frequently say either, hey, I'm just looking for fun, here for a fun time, not a long time, or they'll say, hey, I'm, I'm no one night stands, looking for a long-term relationship. They'll be quite specific on what they're, they're looking for. Now, that does not necessarily mean that they're closed to all other possibilities, but they've made it clear what their ultimate goal is here, and that makes it easier for us as men to decide whether or not we want to pursue this, this possible relationship. So let's do a quick recap here, and we're going to focus then specifically on that your, your key question, which was, how do I find relationships that are like? Number one, start with your own life. Start by making your life absolutely epic. You will be amazed at how many people you meet in that journey. You really, really will. Uh, and, and you can go far and wide. If I were to pick a random hobby like, a, like basketball, you might say, okay, I've started playing basketball. I love it. I'm having fun, but it's just guys. Start expanding. Start traveling to other cities. Start joining competitive co-ed clubs. Start going to events. You can make it a very central, important part of your life, and you'll be amazed at the type of connections that you find along the way. And the second thing is, as you're finding those seeds, as you're, as you're out in your living your life, use filtering as a means to, to help yourself focus on the best possible relationships for you. I hope this helps. There's a lot of information in there, but uh, building relationships is a fantastically fun activity. I wish you the best.